Hey, we're not trying to change the world or nothing like that. Chop we're just, lips we're just telling dog. people, we're just telling a certain, <laughs> a certain uh, unit, <laughs> you know, that, that you got to treat me up. as if I lived in Beverly Hills, you know, like you treat them. In the world of rap music, success can be fleeting, and even the most prominent figures can experience a heartbreaking downfall. Today, we delve into the most tragic stories of rappers from the 1980s who dominated the game, but couldn't keep up and are now buried in obscurity. These once iconic artists saw their careers crumble as time went on. In this video, we will explore the reasons behind their fall from grace, including internal conflicts, legal troubles, and label issues. Let's dive right in. MC Hammer. In the late 1980s, the rap industry witnessed the meteoric rise of MC Hammer, a charismatic and talented artist known for his energetic dance moves and catchy hits. Hammer, born Stanley Kirk Burrell, burst onto the scene with his debut album, Feel My Power, in 1987. But it was his 1990 release, Please Hammer, Don't Hurt Him, that catapulted him to international fame. The album featured the iconic single, You Can't Touch This, which became an instant sensation and earned Hammer multiple awards and accolades. With his flashy dance routines and flamboyant fashion sense, MC Hammer became a cultural phenomenon, transcending the boundaries of rap music and capturing the attention of mainstream audiences. His success seemed unstoppable, and he amassed a fortune estimated to be around $70 million at the height of his career. However, as quickly as his star had risen, it began to fade. Hammer's downfall was caused by a combination of financial mismanagement and a failed attempt to change his image. Despite his immense wealth, Hammer found himself caught in a web of extravagant spending and lavish lifestyle choices. He invested heavily in a lavish mansion, a fleet of luxury luxury cars, and even his own racehorse. But it was Hammer's ill-fated venture into the entertainment industry that dealt the final blow to his financial stability. In an ambitious move, he launched his own record label, Oaktown Records, and signed several artists. However, the label failed to achieve the same level of success as his own career, and the financial burden became overwhelming. Hammer's attempts to reinvent himself also backfired. In an effort to shed his pop rap image and appeal to a more mature audience, he released the album The Funky Headhunter in 1994. The album featured a more gangster rap sound, complete with explicit lyrics and a grittier image. Unfortunately, the album was met with mixed reviews and failed to resonate with his fan base. As his financial troubles mounted, Hammer was forced to file for bankruptcy in 1996, a move that shocked the music industry and his fans alike. The once wealthy rap icon found himself in a dire financial situation, with debts totaling over $13 million. Despite his financial woes, MC Hammer continued to release music and tour, but his relevance had diminished significantly. He became a cautionary tale, a symbol of the dangers of of unchecked spending and the fickle nature of fame. MC Hammer's tragic story serves as a stark reminder of the perils that can accompany success in the music industry. His rise to stardom was swift and dazzling, but his fall from grace was equally dramatic. From financial mismanagement to failed reinventions, Hammer's story is a cautionary tale of the highs and lows of fame. Slick Town. Slick Rick is another star from the 1980 who faded into obscurity. His career started off quite great, and he was known for his unparalleled storytelling abilities and unique fashion sense. He was one of the most influential rappers of the 1980s. His debut album, The Great Adventures of Slick Rick, was not only a critical success but also a commercial triumph, earning him a loyal fan base. With chart-topping hits like Children's Story and La Di Da Di, Slick Rick solidified his status as a rap superstar. He was also well known for his fashion sense, and he often expressed himself himself through his clothing. But as the 1990s rolled in, Slick Rick's career began to decline. The ever-evolving landscape of rap music brought forth a new wave of artists with different styles, posing a formidable challenge for him. Despite his valiant efforts to adapt to the changing industry, Slick Rick struggled to recapture the same level of success he once enjoyed. However, it wasn't just the shifting tides of the rap industry that contributed to Slick Rick's downfall. Legal troubles cast a dark shadow over his career, further exacerbating his decline. In 1990, he was arrested and convicted for attempted murder after an altercation in which his cousin fired shots at another man. This incident not only tarnished his reputation, but also led to a significant decline in album sales and radio play. Slick Rick's time behind bars further derailed his career, as he was unable to release new music or perform for his devoted fans. As the years went by, Slick Rick's relevance in the rap industry continued to fade. The once iconic rapper became a distant memory, overshadowed by the new wave of artists who dominated the charts. Despite occasional attempts at a comeback, 
back, Slick Rick was unable to regain the same level of success he once had. Slick Rick's story highlights some of the challenges faced by rappers even till this day. The struggle to remain relevant, given the ever-changing nature of the music industry, coupled with legal troubles, can quickly derail even the most talented artists. While their impact on the rap industry cannot be denied, the rise and fall of rappers like Slick Rick underscore the fleeting nature of fame and the difficulties in maintaining relevance over time. Notwithstanding his troubles, Slick Rick has still gotten his flowers. In recent times, while he may not be a force in the rap scene anymore, he tries to be active in his local community. He co-sponsored the Bronx Youth Empowerment Program's Christmas charity event, and he also was a part of the Trans 4M concert, which donated up to $2.4 million to the I Am Angel Foundation. The Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture paid homage to him with a popular exhibition, and he claimed a place on the Bronx Walk of Fame, as well as a street named after him in the Bronx. Easy E. Another rap artiste who left the scene way too soon was Easy E, a founding member of the influential rap group NWA Easy E, whose real name was Eric Lynn Wright, rose to fame in the late 1980s with hits like Boys in the Hood and Easy Does It. He was known for his unique high pitched voice and gritty lyrics that depicted the realities of life as a gangster. Eric was born in Compton, which is known for its high crime rate and gangster activity. Early on in his life, he was involved in the sale of drugs, mostly marijuana. This venture was quite profitable for him. However, However, after his cousin was killed due to gang violence, Easy e decided to pivot to a career in music instead. He started recording songs in his parents' garage and started up Ruthless Records. By 1987, Easy e was a member of the group NWA, which also had Dr. Dre, Ice Cube, DJ Yella, MC Ren, and Arabian Prince in it. The style of their music was definitely affected by their personal experiences, and Eric especially expressed this in his music. This style of music seemed to resonate well at the time, as gangster rap was gaining popularity, and Easy Easy e seemed to captivate a lot of people. His successful career made him quite wealthy, with estimates putting his wealth at the peak of his career at about $35 million. However, as the 1990s progressed, Easy es relevance in the rap industry began to decline. The emergence of new styles and sounds, such as the West Coast gangster rap pioneered by Death Row Records, overshadowed Easy es earlier success. Additionally, personal and legal troubles plagued the rapper, including conflicts with his former NWA bandmates and ongoing financial issues. First off, NWA started to split up when members started to have personal issues with one another, most notably Easy e and Dr. Dre. And it got so serious that the two rappers took shots at each other with lyrics in their songs. However, the true tragedy and the end of Easy es career would come in a different way. Just when it seemed he might make a comeback, he was diagnosed with AIDS in 1995. He passed away just a few weeks later on March 26, 1995 at the age of 31. His death shocked the rap community and left a void in the industry. Despite his untimely demise, Easy es impact on rap music cannot be denied. His raw and unapologetic style paved the way for future generations of artists, and his contributions to the genre will forever be remembered. In 2024, Easy e was awarded a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award posthumously as a member of NWA Big Daddy Kane. Up next on this list, we have Big Daddy Kane, a rapper known for his smooth flow and charismatic stage presence. Born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, Kane quickly rose to fame with his debut album Long Live the Kane in 1988. His unique style and lyrical prowess captivated audiences, and he became one of the most influential rappers of his time. He is acknowledged as one of the pioneering masters of fast rhyming. Kane's rise to prominence began with his hit singles like Ain't No Half Steppin' and Smooth Operator. His smooth delivery and clever wordplay set him apart from his peers, and he quickly became a household name. His albums consistently topped the charts, and he was hailed as one of the greatest rappers of his generation. However, as time went on, Kane's star began to fade. The rap industry was evolving, and new artists were emerging with fresh sounds and styles. Kane struggled to adapt to the changing landscape and maintain his relevance. His later albums failed to make the same impact as his earlier work, and he found himself overshadowed by a new generation of rappers. Kane's decline can be attributed to a combination of factors. His once innovative style became outdated, and he struggled to reinvent himself. The rap industry was becoming more focused on gangster rap and hardcore lyrics, and Kane's smooth, romantic persona no longer resonated with audiences. He faced stiff competition from artists who were pushing the boundaries of the genre and capturing the attention of fans. Additionally, personal struggles and controversies further hindered Kane's career. He faced legal issues and battles with addiction, which affected his ability to consistently release music and maintain a stable career. His personal life became tabloid fodder, and his public image suffered as a result. Despite his fall from grace, Big Daddy Kane's 
Eminem's impact on the rap genre cannot be overlooked. His smooth flow and lyrical prowess paved the way for future generations of rappers. His influence can be heard in the music of artists like Jay-Z, Nas, and Eminem, who credit Kane as one of their biggest inspirations. He continues to make music to this day, and his latest single, Enough, takes on a political tone as it speaks about police brutality in America. The fall of rap legends like Kane could serve as a cautionary tale, but it's a lot more than just that. While his career may have faded, his legacy lives on in the hearts and minds of rap enthusiasts worldwide. The Jungle Brother. In the late 1980s, the Jungle Brothers burst onto the rap scene with their innovative fusion of rap and jazz, becoming pioneers of the genre. Comprised of members Africa Baby Bam, Mike G, and DJ Sammy B, the group brought a unique sound and style to the rap industry. Their debut album, Straight Out the Jungle, released in 1988, showcased their eclectic mix of samples, socially conscious lyrics, and infectious beats. The Jungle Brothers' early success and critical acclaim positioned them as frontrunners in the rap world. Their influence extended beyond their music, as they were instrumental instrumental in the development of the Native Tongues Collective, which included other notable acts like De La Soul and a tribe called Quest. However, as time went on, the Jungle Brothers struggled to maintain their relevance and commercial success. Despite their undeniable talent and contributions to the rap genre, they found themselves overshadowed by other artists who emerged in the 1990s. The changing landscape of rap music, with its shift towards gangster rap and more aggressive styles, left the Jungle Brothers struggling to find their place. Also, as is usually the case with rap groups, there was also a lot of drama even within the group, and internal conflicts and label issues were other factors that further hindered the group's progress. Creative differences and disagreements over musical direction strained their relationships and led to a decline in productivity. The Jungle Brothers' output became sporadic, and their albums failed to generate the same level of excitement and attention as their earlier work. Despite their challenges, the Jungle Brothers continued to release music and tour, albeit on a smaller scale. They remained committed to their craft and loyal to their fan base, but their impact on the rap industry was largely overlooked by mainstream audiences. As time went on, their attempts at maintaining their relevance didn't seem to work, and they simply just faded out of the rap scene. Even though the group is irrelevant today, the Jungle Brothers are still considered legends of rap. As one of the first and biggest stars of rap, they helped pave the way for the genre that we have now. Their pioneering sound and contributions to the rap genre are largely responsible for creating the style of music that many people enjoy today. Even though rap has evolved so much since their time, their legacy lives on in the music of those they inspired, and as long as rap remains, this legacy continues to live on. Cool Keith. Cool Keith, born Keith Matthew Thornton, is a rapper known for his eccentric style, abstract lyrics, and boundary-pushing creativity. In the late 1980s, he gained recognition as a member of the influential rap group Ultra Magnetic MCs. However, it was his solo career that truly showcased his unique talent and solidified his status as a rap icon. Cool Keith's solo debut album, Dr. Octagon Ecologist, released in 1996, was a groundbreaking project that pushed the boundaries of rap music. The album, produced by Dan the Automator Nakamura, featured Keith's alter ego, Dr. Octagon, a fictional extraterrestrial gynecologist. The project was met with critical acclaim and developed a cult following. Despite his undeniable talent and innovative approach to music, Cool Keith struggled to maintain mainstream success. His unconventional style and abstract lyrics made him a niche artist, appealing to a dedicated fan base but failing to resonate with a wider audience. His refusal to conform to industry standards and his aversion to commercialism further hindered his mainstream appeal. Throughout his career, Cool Keith released numerous albums under various aliases, each showcasing his versatility and willingness to experiment with different sounds and concepts. However, his constant reinvention and exploration of new musical territories often left him overlooked by mainstream audiences. Despite his undeniable talent, Cool Keith faced numerous challenges and setbacks throughout his career. Label issues, lack of promotion, and limited resources hindered his ability to reach a wider audience. His albums often flew under the radar, receiving critical acclaim but failing to generate significant commercial success. Cool Keith's tragic story is one of unfulfilled potential and underappreciation. His contributions to the rap genre, both as a member of Ultra Magnetic MCs and as a solo artist, should not be overlooked. His willingness to push boundaries and defy conventions paved the way for future artists to explore new artistic territories. Like others on this list, while Cool Keith's mainstream success may have been limited, his impact on the rap genre and his influence on future generations of artists cannot be denied. KRS-One 
In the late 1980s, KRS-One burst onto the rap scene with his powerful lyrics, charismatic stage presence, and thought-provoking messages. Born Lawrence Parker, KRS-One quickly gained recognition as one of the most influential rappers of his time. His group, Boogie Down Productions, released their debut album, Criminal Minded, in 1987, which showcased KRS-One's raw talent and solidified his reputation as a formidable lyricist. KRS-One's rise to prominence was fueled by his ability to address social and political issues in his music. His thought-provoking lyrics and conscious rap style resonated with audiences and he became a voice for the marginalized and oppressed. Songs like Sound of Day Police and My Philosophy showcased his ability to tackle important topics while still delivering catchy and memorable hooks. However, as time went on, KRS-One faced numerous challenges that led to his decline in popularity and relevance. One of the main factors was the changing landscape of the rap industry. As the 1990s rolled in, rap music began to shift towards a more commercial and mainstream sound, leaving behind the conscious and socially conscious rap that KRS-One was known for. Additionally, KRS-One faced personal struggles and controversies that further hindered his career. His outspoken nature and controversial statements in interviews alienated fans and industry figures alike. He became known for his confrontational approach to music and his refusal to conform to industry norms. Despite his setbacks, KRS-One continued to release music and collaborate with other artists. His dedication to his craft and his unwavering commitment to his lyrical abilities remained evident. However, However, his relevance in the rap industry waned, and he struggled to recapture the same level of success he had enjoyed earlier in his career. The rapid decline in the popularity of KRS-One highlights one of the challenges faced by rappers even to this day. There has, for a long time, been the argument as to whether music should be political. While some insist that all art is political in some way, and artists are permitted to input that into whatever they create, some people argue that certain topics, especially particularly controversial ones, should be left away from music. This discourse is still in contention to this day. Nevertheless, KRS-One's rise to prominence as a conscious rapper is evidence that people do not mind discussing serious issues through music, even though his subsequent decline highlights the fickle nature of fame and the ever-changing landscape of the rap industry. Despite his struggles and eventual decline, his legacy as a skilled wordsmith and a formidable presence in the rap world are solid factors that should not be overlooked or forgotten. The music industry is a fickle beast, and even the most talented and influential artists can find themselves overshadowed by new trends and changing tastes. It serves as a cautionary tale for aspiring artists, reminding them of the importance of adapting to the times while staying true to their artistic vision. The Far Side the Far Side, a rap group hailing from Los Angeles, emerged with their unique blend of witty lyrics, playful delivery, and innovative production. Comprised of members Slim Kid 3, Fat Lip, Imani, and Booty Brown, The Far Side quickly gained recognition for their debut album, Bizarre Ride to The Far Side, released in 1992. The album was a critical and commercial success, featuring hits like Passing Me By and Ya Mama. The Far Side's playful and introspective lyrics resonated with audiences, and their innovative production style set them apart from their peers. They were celebrated for their creativity and their ability to infuse humor and vulnerability into their music. However, behind the scenes, the far side faced internal struggles that would ultimately lead to their downfall. Creative differences and personal conflicts began to tear the group apart. The departure of member Fatlip further strained their relationships and hindered their ability to work together effectively. Despite the challenges they faced, The Far Side released their second album, Lab Cabin, California, in 1995. The album showcased their growth as artists and featured collaborations with notable producers like Jay Dilla. However, the album failed to replicate the success of their debut, and the group's popularity began to decline. Internal conflicts continued to plague The Far Side, leading to further lineup changes and a loss of momentum. The group struggled to find their footing and maintain their relevance in the ever-changing rap landscape. Despite their undeniable talent and contribution, contributions to the genre, the far side found themselves overshadowed by other artists who emerged during the same era. The tragic story of the far side serves as a reminder of the challenges faced by rap groups in maintaining their unity and creative vision. Their rise to prominence and subsequent decline highlight the delicate balance between artistic expression and personal dynamics within a group. Still, their innovative approach to music and their ability to blend humor and introspection paved the way for future artists to explore new artistic territories. The far side's legacy lives on in the music they created and the impact they had on the rap community. NWA
Previously in this video, we discussed Eazy E, the iconic rapper and founding member of NWA. Now we discuss the band that threw him into the timeline. In the annals of hip hop history, few groups have left as indelible a mark as NWA, a pioneering force whose trajectory mirrored the tumultuous landscape of late 20th century America. Comprised of Dr. Dre, Ice Cube, Eazy E, MC Ren, and DJ Yella, NWA's journey from the mean streets of Compton to international fame is a testament to the transformative power of music and the enduring resonance of authenticity. Emerging in the late 1980s, NWA burst onto the scene with their groundbreaking debut album, Straight Outta Compton, 1988. The record was a lightning rod for controversy, its gritty narratives of urban life and unapologetic critique of law enforcement sparking debates about censorship and social responsibility. Tracks like F*** the Police became anthems of resistance, galvanizing marginalized communities and amplifying the voice of the disenfranchised. NWA's meteoric rise to fame was fueled not only by their provocative lyrics, but also by their uncompromising attitude and streetwise swagger. They embodied the rebellious spirit of a generation, challenging mainstream norms and defying expectations at every turn. Their impact extended far beyond the realm of music, influencing fashion, language, and even politics, as their message resonated with a diverse array of listeners hungry for authenticity and empowerment. However, beneath the surface of their success lurked tensions and conflicts that would ultimately lead to the group's downfall. Easy es business dealings, particularly his relationship with manager Jerry Heller, strained his ties with other members, most notably Ice Cube. Cube's departure from the group in 1989 sent shockwaves through the hip-hop community, setting the stage for a bitter and highly publicized feud that would divide fans and friends alike. As legal troubles mounted and personal animosities simmered, NWA's once unified front began to crumble. The group's dissolution in the early 1990s marked the end of an era, but their legacy endured, shaping the course of hip-hop and popular culture for decades to come. Their influence can be heard in the music of subsequent generations of artists, from gangster rap pioneers like Tupac Shakur to contemporary icons like Kendrick Lamar, who continue to draw inspiration from NWA's fearless spirit and uncompromising vision. In retrospect, the rise and fall of NWA symbolize the complexities of fame and success at the top. Their story is a cautionary tale of the perils of fame and the fragility of artistic collaboration, but it is also a testament to the enduring power of music to provoke, inspire, and affect change. NWA may have disbanded, but their message lives on a beacon of hope and defiance in a world often devoid of both. Cool Mo D. One rapper who experienced a significant rise and fall during this time was Cool Mo D. Known for his rapid fire delivery and battle rap skills, Cool Mo D made a name for himself as a member of the influential rap group The Treacherous Three. Their energetic performances and clever wordplay captivated audiences, and Cool Mo D's solo career seemed promising. In 1986, Cool Mo D released his debut solo album, Cool Mo D, which featured the hit single Go See the Doctor. The album showcased his lyrical prowess and solidified his status as one of the top rappers of the era. Cool Mo D's unique style and confident stage presence set him apart from his peers. However, as the 1990s rolled around, Cool Mo D's relevance began to fade. The rap scene was evolving, and new artists with different styles were emerging. Cool Mo D struggled to adapt to the changing landscape and maintain his commercial success. Internal conflicts within the rap community also contributed to Cool Mo D's decline. He engaged in high-profile rap battles with other artists, including LL Cool J and Ice-T, which garnered attention but ultimately overshadowed his music. These battles, while entertaining, distracted from Cool Mo D's artistic growth and contributed to his fading relevance. Despite his struggles, Cool Mo D's impact on the rap genre cannot be overlooked. His rapid-fire delivery and battle rap skills influenced a generation of rappers, and his contributions to the art form are still recognized today. While his commercial success may have waned, his legacy lives on in the music he created and the impact he had on the rap community. Thank you for watching this video. If you'd like to watch another fascinating video like this, click on one of the boxes on your screen right now.